Welcome to our brief introduction to The Grapes of Wrath, a movie released in the 1940s that captivates audiences with its compelling narrative. This film delves into the struggles of a family during the Great Depression, offering a raw portrayal of the challenges they face. As you watch, be prepared for a roller coaster of emotions from moments that will have you laughing out loud to scenes that will shock you and tug at your heartstrings. Have you ever pondered your favorite character in this classic film? Or perhaps you have a cherished memory associated with it. The Grapes of Wrath boasts a diverse cast of characters, each with their own story to tell. Feel free to share your thoughts and experiences with us in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. So, grab your popcorn and settle in, because this movie promises an unforgettable journey through laughter, tears, and everything in between. Keep watching for more interesting tidbits and anecdotes about The Grapes of Wrath. The movie The Grapes of Wrath, released in 1940, had a big effect on both cinema and popular culture. When it came out, people really liked how it told a powerful story about the struggles faced by Dust Bowl era migrants in America. It was based on John Steinbeck's novel of the same name and touched people with its themes of resilience, family, and facing tough times. At the time, The Grapes of Wrath got people talking about fairness and how hard life was for working class folks. It showed the tough realities of migrant workers during the Great Depression, shining a light on issues like poverty and being taken advantage of. The movie didn't just stay on the screen. It influenced lots of other things in pop culture. People in schools started studying it, and it made more folks interested in John Steinbeck's writing. Even after it came out, The Grapes of Wrath kept being important. It inspired other versions like plays and radio shows, so the story stayed alive for new audiences. People loved collecting stuff related to the movie, like posters. Its themes stayed relevant, and it kept inspiring filmmakers and artists. In short, the Grapes of Wrath made a big impact on pop culture, making people talk about fairness and human dignity. Its influence lasted a long time and kept inspiring folks, even now. In January 1940, the world got its first glimpse of a groundbreaking film. The Rivoli Theater in New York City hosted its premiere, attended by none other than Daryl Zanuck himself. Daryl Hickman, known for his role in the film, had ties to Verna Hilly, and Frank Gill Jr. Peggy Ryan, another talent in the cast, would later see her daughters and all the president's men playing secretaries alongside Donald O'Connor. It's fascinating how connections in Hollywood span generations, isn't it? Ranked 95 in Empire Magazine's The Top 100 Movie Stars of All Time list, Henry Fonda delivered a memorable performance in the film. One notable scene involves a joke told by a truck driver at a diner, which remains unfinished. In the book, the complete joke involves a little kid explaining his tardiness due to assisting with breeding a heifer. The teacher questions why the kid didn't let his father handle it, to which the kid responds that the bull does it better. In the audio commentary on the DVD and Blu-ray releases, film historian Joseph McBride mentions that Fonda's performance earned a Best Actor nomination at the Academy Awards. However, he lost to James Stewart's portrayal in The Philadelphia Story. McBride suggests that Stewart receive compensation for his previous loss and Mr. Smith goes to Washington. However, the claim that Clark Gable won for Gone with the Wind is false. Robert Donat won for Goodbye, Mr. Chips. A notable inclusion in the soundtrack is the song Red River Valley, which holds significance due to its association with the Oklahoma-Texas border. Its origins, however, remain debated, with some linking it to Canada's Red River of the North. The song's exact birthplace remains uncertain. John Steinbeck expressed admiration for the portrayal of Tom Joad by Henry Fonda, stating that Fonda's performance brought his own written words to life. In a government short promoting the National Recovery Act, Charles Middleton made an appearance as Abraham Lincoln. This historical portrayal showcased Middleton's versatility as an actor, despite his role being unrelated to the Grapes of Wrath. Set in the backdrop of the Great Depression, the adaptation of a well-known novel faced certain challenges in adhering to the standards of the time. One notable instance involved the character's rendition of a popular song, tweaked to comply with censorship guidelines. Despite limitations, the film brought together talents from various domains, including an actress whose personal life intertwined with the industry through marriage. Additionally, one actor's role foreshadowed his future in a popular television series. The film's journey reflects the resilience of its characters, navigating through adversity in pursuit of a better life. In preparation for the movie, undercover investigators were dispatched by producer Daryl F. Zanuck to migrant camps. Their mission to verify John Steinbeck's depiction of the harsh conditions. 
To Zanuck's dismay, the reality exceeded Steinbeck's portrayal, revealing an even bleaker and more unjust environment than described in The Grapes of Wrath. The Hollywood Walk of Fame recognized actor Frank Phelan's contribution, awarding him a star on February 8, 1960, at 6201 Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood, California. The film earned its place in cinematic history as one of the early selections for the National Film Registry in 1989, solidifying its significance in American culture. This cinematic piece, born from Steinbeck's impactful narrative, prompted real-world investigations, earned an enduring spot on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and secured a distinguished position in the National Film Registry. Ranked as the 23 greatest movie of all time by the American Film Institute in 27, this film features Jack Pennock, who showcases his military drill skills in a scene that slipped past continuity checkers. Meanwhile, Ward Bond, known for his prolific career spanning three decades, tragically passed away at the age of 57 in 1960. Despite his premature death, Bond left a lasting legacy, regularly appearing in 10 to 20 films per year, with his most productive year being 1935 when he starred in 30 movies. In the early 1930s, Joe Sawyer took a leap of faith, heeding advice from Pasadena Playhouse's director, Gilmore Brown. Saving his earnings, he ventured to New York, hoping for a break in theater. Despite facing meager pay on Broadway, fate smiled upon him as he wed Jean Wood, daughter of Hollywood director Sam Wood. However, the marriage was short-lived, and by 1932, he returned to Hollywood, signing with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer. Henry Fonda, known for his roles on screen, also had a soft spot for television. A fan of All in the Family, he had the honor of hosting a special episode celebrating its first 100 moments. Meanwhile, in the post-World War II Soviet Union, Hollywood films were a rarity due to concerns about their influence. Yet, this film broke through those barriers regarded as a portrayal of capitalism's flaws. The Soviet populace embraced it, seeing parallels to their own struggles. The film's depiction of a family's freedom to own and operate a truck resonated deeply, a stark contrast to their own reality. This narrative, a blend of personal journeys and political resonance, captures the essence of a film that transcended borders. Considered for the leading role in Bicycle Thieves, Henry Fonda, who starred in The Grapes of Wrath, demonstrated his versatility as an actor. Daryl Hickman, another actor in the film, has a diverse ancestry, with roots in Sweden, Germany, England, and Scotland. The production of the movie lasted seven weeks, during which the cast and crew worked tirelessly to bring this powerful story to life. The Grapes of Wrath remains a landmark in cinema history, showcasing the struggles of the Great Depression and the resilience of the human spirit.